Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to our vodcast on the cell division process called meiosis. Now, we talked about another division process called mitosis, which is used for growth and repair, and it creates body cells. Cells that include your skin, muscle cells, cells in your hair that make up your fingernails, blood cells, bone cells, anything that makes up your body. Well, meiosis is the production of sex cells. Okay, so it produces cells such as sperm and egg cells. So let's take a look at how it does this. All right, so the first thing that you have to understand about meiosis is the idea of homologous pairs. Now, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46. And here you can see the 23 groupings or 23 pairs of chromosomes that we have. Now, the reason why our chromosomes come in pairs is because you get one half of each set from your mom and one half of each set from your dad. You get the same chromosomes from your mom as you do from your dad, but they have different genetic information for the same traits. Let me explain that a little bit more clearly. Let's take a look at the homologous pair number one up here. When we take a look at homologous pair number one, let's take a look at this pink area. Let's say this pink area is the gene or the section of DNA for eye color. All right, so let's say mom has blue eyes. So this pink area here has the DNA code for blue eyes. And then for dad, he's got the DNA code for brown eyes. So these two chromosomes have genetic information for the same trait. Let's take a look at this dark green band down here on the bottom of the chromosomes. Let's say this dark green band by the bottom of this chromosome is the gene or section of DNA for hair type. So let's say this is for curly hair. Well, on the same chromosome from your dad, in close to the same spot, he's going to have the gene for maybe straight hair. Even though your parents have different hair types, the genes for those hair types are on the same chromosome. So these chromosomes hold the information for the same traits. And that goes throughout all the chromosomes except for the 23rd pair. The 23rd pair, this is your gender or sex chromosome pair. Now, the reason why they're called homologous is if you take a look at the word homologous, it's got the prefix homo in it, and homo means the same. Because these pairs have DNA codes for the same traits, like eye color as we discussed up here, and the traits of hair type as we have down here, they are called homologous because they have the genetic information for the same traits for an individual. This is important because this is how the chromosomes are going to line up in meiosis. So let's take a quick look at the difference between meiosis and mitosis. All right, if we take a look at meiosis and mitosis here, we have mitosis here at the top and we have meiosis here at the bottom. One of the biggest differences or most obvious differences between the two divisions is that mitosis is one division. We start off with one cell, the parent cell, and we split it into two daughter cells. And these cells are going to be identical to the parent. Whereas in meiosis, we, have, we start off with our single cell, and then we go through one set of divisions, and then we go through a second set of divisions. Mitosis has one division, whereas meiosis has two divisions. Second of all, the number of cells that are created are different. At the end of mitosis, we start off with one, and we create two cells. Whereas in meiosis, we start off with one cell, and then we end up with four sex cells. Okay? So that's another major difference. And the third major difference is this. If you take a look at the prophase phase of mitosis and meiosis, when the chromosomes condense and start to form, you'll see that we start off with the same amount, but their arrangements are different. When these chromosomes replicate and create their chromatid pairs, these two purple ones are two chromatids in a pair, you'll notice that they're not arranged in any particular order. But if you look at meiosis, meiosis has these chromatid pairs arranged in what are called homologous pairs. So that's why we talked about homologous pairs. So this is going to be the chromosome from your mom, chromosome from your dad, and they are paired up. And then this red chromosome is paired up with the pink one. And as you take a look at the different phases, you'll notice that they, in mitosis, the chromatids go by themselves, whereas the chromatids move in their homologous pairs. That's the third major difference. There are some other differences that we'll get to later. But let's talk about how meiosis makes sex cells. 
meiosis again, we're going to start off with the first division, which is meiosis 1. Now, meiosis 1 is going to start off with interphase, just like in mitosis, where basically the cell is going to grow and is going to duplicate its DNA. But the cell that we start off here is what's called a diploid cell, a cell with all of its chromosomes. Humans have, as we said, 46 chromosomes in their body cells, so the diploid number would be 46. So this cell's diploid number in this example would be 4, and that's going to be important a little bit later. So we're just going to put down 4 right here. That's our diploid number, 4 chromosomes. We have a green, a red, a purple, and a pink. So that's 4 chromosomes right there. Okay. Then once it grows and replicates its DNA and starts to form its chromatid pairs, what's going to happen next in prophase is very similar to what happens in prophase and mitosis. The nucleus disappears, and the chromosomes condense forming their chromatids. So again, here we have our chromosome with its chromatid, so we have our chromatid pairs. But now what's going to happen, which makes us different from mitosis, is that these chromatids are going to line up with their homologous pairs. So they're going to line up in their homologous pairs, and then, as we said in mitosis, the centrioles are going to move to the opposite ends. Remember, they move to the poles of the cell. So the centrioles move to the poles, and then they're going to start to form these fibers called spindle fibers. And what happens in prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase in all of meiosis is the same thing that happens in mitosis. First of all, in metaphase, again, we have our homologous pairs. They line up across the middle. That's why metaphase is called the middle phase. And then the spindle fibers are going to connect and hook into the chromatid pairs at the parts called the centromeres. Remember how he said centromeres meet in the center? And then in anaphase, the spindle fibers are going to shorten and pull on the chromatids. And they're not going to break the chromatid pairs apart. They're going to break apart the homologous pairs. So dad's chromosomes, let's say, get pulled to one side of the cell. And mom's chromosomes, let's say, get pulled to the opposite side. So the homologous pairs are broken up. And then we go into telophase, where the cytoplasm divides and, and two new cells form. Now this is a little bit different from telophase in meiosis 2 and in mitosis, but you'll see the reason why this happens. Now once telophase is over, interphase will not start back up again. Even though the cells form and the chromatids will unwind and go back into loose DNA, and the nucleus will reappear again, there's not going to be any replication going on. And that's the big thing in interphase is the replication of DNA. And that's not going to happen. So what we're going to do is jump straight into prophase 2. So here we are in the second division. And what's different about this is that, one, we deal with two cells now. Okay, one, two. And then second, the chromatids are by themselves. They're not in homologous pairs like they were in meiosis 1. And again, everything is the same. The chromatids and the spindle fibers reappear in prophase, or prepping for division. So again, prophase is the prep phase. And then the chromatids are going to line up in the middle of each cell. And then the spindle fibers, again, will attach to the centromeres. And then in anaphase, the spindle fibers are going to shorten and pull the chromatids apart. Okay, so now the chromatids get split. And then the chromatids or chromosomes are going to move to the opposite ends of the cell. Now in telophase 2, we now get the reformation of the nucleus. Okay, The nucleus reappears, and now the cell is what's called a haploid cell, which means haploid means it has half the number of chromosomes. So if we take a look at these cells here, this cell, that cell, that cell, and that cell, and you count the number of chromosomes in it, you'll notice that this cell has a green and a red chromosome, so it's two chromosomes. Another green and a red chromosome combo. Then we have purple and pink, two chromosomes, and we have purple and pink again. That's another two chromosomes. So, if we wrote down our chromosome total, it would be two here. Well, the reason why these are called haploid cells is because they have half the number of the original cell. Now, earlier in the beginning, we wrote down the number of chromosomes in the cell, which, was, which is what we call diploid, which is four. We have four chromosomes, 
So the diploid number is four. It's double the haploid cell. Okay, so I always remember D in diploid was the same as D is in double. We come back, and now we have our four haploid cells. Now these four haploid cells are going to have different fates based on whether you are a male or you are a female. So what's going to happen next, now that meiosis is over, cytokinesis is going to begin. And when cytokinesis begins, the cytoplasm is going to divide, creating four cells. Now, if you are a male, those four cells are going to become sperm cells, because those are the male sex cells. However, in females, it's a little different. You're going to produce four cells, but only one of those cells will become the egg. And that's usually the bigger one because it has all the organelles and the materials it needs in order to be the egg. The other three cells, they don't amount to anything. What will happen to them is that the body will discard them. Okay, so this is how meiosis creates sperm cells and egg cells. Well, that concludes our vodcast on meiosis. Thank you for your time, and I hope that was helpful.